Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Um, life has been pretty busy and the crickets have been super busy. But uh, we're back with another video because we've had a few little mistakes and lessons to be learned from the breeding soils. Uh, if you've been following along with our Instagram, we've been changing up the actual size tubs that we've been using. So you can obviously see we've been using some smaller ones. We're still doing some bigger stuff. Um, with different populations and yeah we're just finding a couple little interesting things so yeah this is going to be a breeding soil video part two but then also just some tips and some mistakes that we've learned along the way yeah so enjoy the video we'll get into it all right breeding soils mm, super complicated forever going to be learning. If you've been checking out the Instagram, you would have noticed we've been changing the different size breeding soils that we've actually had on the farm. So we've got these little takeaway plastic containers that you get just from your takeaway shop. Um, they're great, don't get me wrong, we'll talk about it in a minute. We've got some bigger ones as well and we've got well, those big ones we've always been using and then we've got these medium sized ones which are about in between uh, those two sizes that you saw just before. Now the reason why we have been making some changes with the breeding soils is because one, we're trying to find um, out if it actually affects our population. You know, if we use a bigger one, do we get more crickets? Or if we use a smaller one, do we get more crickets? We've also been switching up the amount of time the crickets are able to breed in there. So we've done 24 hours, we've done three days, and now we've also done seven days. Um, with all three different sizes, so we'll tell you the results of those. And we've also done, uh, well the reason why we also did this is because we were looking to see how much quicker we can actually get the jobs done. So when we use these little tiny breeding soils, we save literally about half the time because it's only one handful of soil and we also save on soil because it's only one scoop instead of three scoops. So it's a time factor and also a material factor that we actually save time. Now, uh, first things first, we're still getting a lot of crickets, okay? So when we use the smaller tubs, um, you would have seen on Instagram recently that we had a, like a carpet layer of crickets. I'll show that video right now. Now you can see there are so many crickets in there. It's the most crickets we've ever seen when we were using these little uh, containers. But the problem is we didn't actually have enough food across the whole bin. So this is the bin from the video you remember seeing in this corner. And now there's like, there's crickets under there. Like we've checked it all. There's still plenty under here. When I actually lift it up and give it a little shake, there's still plenty under there that are all running around. But um, there were just, there isn't enough compared to what we saw before. And we'll have to wait a little bit longer to actually see what that container actually weighs. But when we have sprinkled food, and I'm talking about like throwing the food at the back there that you can see, when we put food all around the container that the pinheads can actually get to it, we're finding results like this. I'll quickly just get my phone light up so you can see it a little bit better. Have a look at all those crickets. Now, when we've put food all around the container, and we're gonna be setting our bins up like this in the future, where there's literally food all underneath. So the pinheads can uh, literally just be hatched, fall out of the container and get enough food. All right, so that's really, really good. Nice little lesson learned there that we need to probably put more food in for the amount of crickets that we're actually getting at the moment because we've got you know, close, to, close to 25 breeders at the moment. Um, which is why we're trying to figure out what size tub we're going to use because there's just a lot of there's a lot more work when you've only got like five or six it's really easy it doesn't really matter what size you use but when you've got a lot you want to make sure that you get the best bang for your buck when it comes to how much time and effort you put into it now we know we know the crickets can lay a lot of eggs in 24 hours and the reason why we know that is this tub here was only in there for 24 hours and you can see all the cricket eggs just on the, uh, on the top there, then also on the side. So there's plenty of eggs being born into those little um, containers, but the problem is that was only in there for 24 hours and when we leave it in there for longer than 24 hours, the soil actually starts to dry out. And then you get something like this, where they've started to kick all of the soil out, which just means they've kicked out eggs as well. So you're losing eggs. Um, 
they're breeding a lot, so just change it every 24 hours. If you've got more than 5,000 breeders in the containers like we do, they're gonna start to kick it out, it's gonna dry out. Um, so yeah, if you're using these and you've got a similar size farm as us, just use a bigger breeding tub. Like these medium ones, these medium ones have been absolutely amazing, getting good, really good results from that, it's not drying out. All the eggs are on the side, you would have seen photos on Instagram. But yeah, these big ones, just because they take so long to pack up, or sorry, like it takes so long to make, it's double the amount of time. So we're just trying to find like where do we draw the line um, with how much time we're putting into this as well. Now, um, also a, like a fun little fact about this one is we left it in there for 24 hours, but we also didn't have uh, the crickets breeding in there at all. So we actually took the breeding soil out for seven days. They, they didn't have any eggs, uh, so they didn't have any breeding soil to lay into. And then put that in for 24 hours, and they just flooded to it and laid all those eggs. So they actually played catch up. So if you're worried about um, missing days, or you're worried about, oh, like my crickets aren't gonna be laying eggs because uh, I didn't get my breeding soils in, like they, they actually played catch up. And the reason why I know that is literally this tub here, to here to here, there's about a three day difference, which means the population is going to be pretty similar. There might be a thousand crickets difference, it's not that big of a deal um, because we've also increasing in size and increasing in population. But when we had no breeding soil in here and we had a breeding soil in here um, for seven days, just left it, they got all their eggs out, these guys didn't, literally then put it in for 24 hours. Um, and obviously, that was the result with all those eggs on top of the breeding soil. And this one just here just had a normal like layer of eggs just like on the side um, because obviously when they start to run out of room they can't go down anymore they just start putting them on top and yeah so we know that the crickets do play a bit of a catch-up game uh, which can also lead into if you want to just leave your breeding soils in there for longer then just use the bigger ones but the problem is then you know that the hatching time instead of like all the crickets being born within 24 hours with each other they might be born within you know say a week and it just kind of like just takes a little longer to actually get through the farm if anyone who's watching this has been starting to breed crickets you'll notice how frustrating it is to actually get your breeding soils out and get all the pinheads off and you know get the bin all set up for them to live a bit more of a normal adulthood life now the other factor is with these small ones, the really, really cool thing about these is they take like half the time to actually get the crickets off. And that is literally when you're down here and you have to change the breeding soil. Uh, here's an example. Got a few just breeding on here. You know, if you were to tip this up and just shake them off, they literally just get off the breeding soil really, really quick. That's a really good thing about those small ones. If you have a big one, they sit there, they hide, it takes a lot longer. So we're also saving time in that aspect by using the small ones, but those obviously are too small because we do a three day cycle. If you're doing 24 hours, use them, go for it. But we're doing a three day cycle. So we use some bigger ones. It takes a little bit longer, but it's still saving us a lot of time. And also when you're taking breeding soils out, which is the job I'm currently doing, which is why we've got old breeding soils down there. They don't spend as long on top of this soil here. There's a few in here. Right, but I'm just gonna blow those out in a minute. And it takes a lot. Um, they, just, they just get off the soil a lot quicker. It's really, really handy. Rather than when they're on these big ones, you can actually just see here. And I need to get my phone light out again so it doesn't go blurry. But you can actually see all the crickets on the inside of that. Um, tub and the reason why the reason why they don't actually get off the edge just there is because these soils stay a lot wetter for longer and they've got moisture um, which is the reason why they don't get off so when they're here they dry out a lot quicker and there's still crickets on here because it's quite new this is only hatched literally yesterday I believe but they do get off the smaller tubs like there's nothing on these ones here so I can remove all those which is really really handy but another little quick lesson that we learnt here is with this one here, 
We left it in for three days, obviously it kicked all the soil out because the soil started to dry out and they started to look for more eggs or more places to lay the eggs. Um, and you know, we saw that they still had eggs in it and we're like, cool, they still hatched. And the reason why we know that they hatched is because this one has a very similar same setup where all the soil got kicked out. There's still plenty of eggs in there. But the crickets couldn't actually get out. And we did this on purpose to actually just see how many crickets were gonna be born in this tub. Now, obviously most of these crickets have died um, along the way because pinheads are quite precious. But we still know there's been a lot of, there's probably be like a thousand crickets in here easily still. So we know that all these eggs on top of here are gonna be hatched. And we know all those eggs are gonna hatch as well. So it's gonna be a really, really good crop. So these containers work, these big ones containers work, the medium containers work, every, everything works. It just really depends on how much time you have um, to dedicate to the farm. Now, for us, we just balance it with our dry land farm and we balance it like, got the old man, he's amazing, he's so on top of it. But yeah, like we just make sure that we just pick and choose when we want to get as many eggs. Now, we know that if we miss a few days because something comes up, we don't have to stress too much because the eggs, also the crickets play catch up, like I just explained before uh, with the not having the breeding soil in there for seven days, which is really, really cool. So yeah, that's, that's a really, really interesting little aspect of the farm at the moment with the breeding soils. It's been a long, windy road, but yeah, it's good. Okay, just in summary, um, it really comes down to how many crickets you've got breeding. If you've only got a thousand crickets breeding, I would recommend you just use the smaller ones and you can leave them in for literally up to seven days. If you go 2,000, 5,000 crickets, you probably have to only do it for literally three days. And then if you've got closer, upwards of 5,000 crickets like what we do per container breeding, then you're gonna actually have to adjust the size container that you're using. So hopefully there's enough detail in the video and I explained it the best I can because <laughs> it's, it's so messy, I know. But hopefully that can give you a better um, understanding of like what size container you should use for how many crickets you've got, because you'll know. And also just in terms of the incubation as well, like we know that we don't really need to, or we don't need to incubate because we're getting the pinheads being born and the humidity level's fine. It's just that we think that they're dying because of food, um, because we always normally just put the food just here rather than putting it in the back. Um, so yeah, you know, obviously there's still heaps of crickets, like you look at them all on the egg cartons just there, there's plenty. But yeah, and we're, we're always finding that the population is increasing, so we're just learning as, as we go. And as we get more and more crickets, we wanna just keep um, change, changing some stuff, trialing some stuff. And yeah, we, we messed up, we killed a bunch, and that's okay, so don't stress. Uh, that happens with cricket farming, happens with all farming. <laughs> you know, it's human error. And yeah, so in summary, just make a judgment call on how much room you've got in your farm and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Good luck with your breeding soils and hopefully this has helped. Bye.